Welcome to this small work table. What I thought I'd do is make a version of a Nathan Stubblefield coil. I've used copper and aluminium wire and I've wound them both at the same time as you can see 55 times down this old solder tube. And I thought, you know, maybe that'll allow me to try a ferrite rod down the middle, try different experiments with this and just see what it might offer. Um, just something purely different. Well, the first thing I've rigged up is a jewel thief, which of course has no core. <laughs> there's no iron core, there's no toroid, anything. It's just the wire. So let's see if this fires up. For clarification, here's a picture from JohnBedini.net where he's drawn out a Nathan Stubblefield coil, which were generally used for telephone services. But you can see that in there you've got a winding of copper, a winding of steel, a winding of copper, a winding of steel and down it goes around the forming shape. So that's why this copper and aluminium one that I've made is referred to really as a stubble field coil. But does it work with a dual thief circuit? And yes, yes it does with a 1.5 volt AAA. It uses 18 milliamps. I've got a 10k resistor to the base of a 2N2222. Okay, now we have a ferrite core in there, and there doesn't seem to be any change at all. If I shake the thing out and you have a look at the LED, <laughs> whether there's a core there or not makes no difference, which is actually quite interesting. But there, yeah, core or not, it still works. The next thing I'll try and do is to emulate this little Slayer Exciter over here, which itself was made, the coil was made, on an old solder tube. So with only 55 turns, and of course each turn is interspaced with the other kind of metal, it shouldn't work at all, should it? Hmm. Before I do, I have a little thought that can I get any kind of um, AV plug action out of this thing, or wireless range or something, with it just connected like a jewel thief? And so I've put a little holder there for a battery to go in. I'll put that AA in. And now... I wonder if you can pick anything up. Oh, ha! the answer is yes, from the aluminium. The bare aluminium. I'm actually picking up some energy through this AV plug, which is two diodes facing different directions and tied at one end, than just the LED on the top. So with that little bit of a success, what happens with the ferrite rod if I put that in. Well first of all let's have a look now. It was easiest to get it from just before the 10k so there we are that's what it looks like. If I put this ferrite rod in I don't expect there to be any change but you never know. There we go. Try again. Oh it is. <laughs> it is a heck of a lot brighter. <laughs> And over here on this, yeah we do, we get it from from the bare windings of the aluminium. So really, with wanting to make it more like a Slayer Exciter, how do we wire this coil up? Well what I've got is the end of the copper connects to the start of the aluminium. So that's more like the way that you do a pancake coil. I'll leave that in place. Because on a Slayer Exciter, you've got the, so I've got three turns here, three turn coil, um, and then you've got the single winding all the way up, normally of thin copper wire. So what I'll do is I'll connect one end of the two remaining connections that will be left, the same as this one's connected, I might as well use this circuit, and then leave the other end free at the top. Now while I'm desoldering and rearranging things here, it should be said that a regular Slayer Exciter would probably normally have say 800 turns on it. This one here has only had 250 turns on it, but it's pretty good. Um, that thing has only got a total of 110 and of course they're intertwined with each other. So I don't expect too much from it, but this could be interesting. And after snapping the base, I did get it all connected up and unfortunately is really nothing. Little LED doesn't come on. The LED on the circuit board doesn't come on. Ah well, it was worth a go. 
but unfortunately that doesn't seem to work. Well, it was a shame about this little system here, uh, but you might be glad to know I have now repaired it again. I've now fixed that base, so I can actually pick it up and whatnot again. I've glued it. <laughs> but I thought, well, you know, why give up on trying to find out whether it will do wireless energy at all? Just because that system didn't work, the conventional way of a Slayer Exciter. So I've now reconnected it back up with the transistor and the 10k resistor. That's all there is there. Put the battery back in. I've also found a half winding on an old solder tube, so I've put an LED across. I then found out something when I put the ferrite rod through the middle. I'll show you that next. Right, and as you can see, that LED is sometimes flashing. It's a little bit strange, I don't know if it's one of my connections or, or what. And in fact, I can put my hand around sometimes and it comes on, and other times it, it doesn't. It's all a little bit odd, but as you can see, there is a little bit of wireless range there. I was quite excited to see that, even though it doesn't work on a usual tower. It seems like there is some functionality for wireless wireless output. But as I say, it's a little strange in the way that it's coming on and off. I'll have to look at that further at some point. I found the problem. It was the aluminium wire that was connecting to the collector of the transistor. That's why it wasn't a good connection, because of course you can't solder to it. Well, not very easily. Right, so the next finding is that this LED will work both ways around when I connect to the emitter and the collector. I'll try and demonstrate that. There we go, that's one way around. Turn the LED around. Uh, oops, and there we go. It's lit up that way round as well. So it lights up both ways round. I don't think I've seen that on other circuits, that functionality. Right, so one thing I wanted to do was just check where this field goes to. And I'm moving this up the length here. Oh, I see. Is it running out? Does it come back again at the end? No, it doesn't. So it's all down one end. Okay, well, that's fair enough. Anyway, at least there is some wireless functionality. I'll put the schematic on the screen now. So, there we go. There was a bit of wireless fun with this thing. Okay, see you next time.